Bless you guys. It's been a while. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jason Rodriguez. I am a chaplain and I am coming out of what has been a couple of months being on the sabbatical. I was on a sabbatical because I realized that there were things that God needed to do in me before I was to step into ministry in the way that I feel that I am called to, the way that I feel I am supposed to, uh, especially in the season going forward. And so I knew that before I could ever preach the word to anyone else and before I could ever teach the word to anyone else, I had to be changed and transformed inside first. And so one of the things that God has been doing in me is he's been doing a personal revival within me. And one of those personal revivals he's been bringing in me has been the love of God. You see, we cannot do ministry well or to the extent that we're meant to. We can't even live life to the extent that we're meant to without the love of God. It is, after all, the love of God that makes life worth living. It's the love of God that sustains us when trials and tribulation come. It's the love of God that allows us to push through throughout our life, no matter what the circumstance may be. It's the love of God that changes and transforms people. It's the love of God. And so the Holy Spirit has been reestablishing the love of God within me. Another thing that God has been doing in me recently has been realigning me with my calling. You see, for a long time I was running, running from my calling and what I believe God has called me for. But what ended up happening was I started to say yes here as well as say yes here. But it was important that I got it here first to say yes. Because this is the secret place. No one else sees what's in here except you and God. And so I had to say yes in my mind in the secret place, make up my mind, and then verbally say yes. Because our verbal yes is a transform is a manifestation of our inner yes. I'm going to say that again. Our verbal yes is a manifestation of our inner yes. And so if our inner yes is out of alignment with the will of God, then our verbal yes doesn't really have the same effect as it should. And so these are two things that God has been doing that have allowed for there to be personal revival within me. And as the Lord is doing a personal revival in me. He has been bringing back ministry into my life. I didn't ask for it. I said yes, but I didn't ask for it. I haven't been really looking for it the way that I used to, but it's been coming to me. Because now is the season where God is actually sending me. He's the one doing the work now, not me. I've realized that I cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. I've realized without the Holy Spirit, I'm powerless. You see, because there are things that God has given us the ability to do in our life that we can do on our own, but then there are other things that God has to do for us where we just simply become obedient and we lean on the Holy Spirit and he does the work. So I'm going to say it again. There are things God has given us the ability to do where we can do it ourselves, And then there are other things where we got to lean on him for him to accomplish what he wants to accomplish.
and too long I was depending on myself to try and accomplish what God wanted to accomplish. It's great the training that I've received. It's great the institutes that I am a part of. It's great the church that I'm a part of, and, and those are needed. But skill without anointing lacks transformation. Skill without anointing lacks transformation. I don't want to just have great skill. I want to have the anointing of the Holy Spirit because it's the anointing that breaks every yoke. It's the anointing that makes the glory come. It's the anointing that draws people. The Father draws people through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. People will see the anointing and they will know something is different. People will see the anointing and they will feel a change in the atmosphere. Even if they cannot understand or describe what they're feeling or comprehend it, they will know that there's something different about you and I when the anointing is present in wherever we are. And wherever we're operating under the anointing, people will say there's something different here. And that's where the Lord gets all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And so with that being said, I look forward to the next season that God is taking me and will be taking us as we go forward. And so that's not the message I want to share with you today, but I am sharing that with you so you know where I have been, where I'm at now, and where I'm going. And so I want to encourage you guys to stay with something. And that is that our nation, our world is in chaos. We are going through a time that is unlike any time throughout human history. This is the first time ever in human history where the entire world is getting shut down because of a virus, a pandemic that has affected everything, a disaster that has struck everything about society. This has literally brought the world to its knees and it is still bringing the world to its knees and so during this time that we are living in one of the big things that we need in moving forward is we need hope we need hope because without hope we will not have the strength to continue living on. I remember a minister one time said this, uh, and he, he said this in one of my discipleship classes. He said, man cannot live a single second without hope. They can live without love. They can live without material things. They can live without food up to a point, but they cannot live a single second without hope. Because think about it, people who have ended their life prematurely was because for a second they lost hope. So during this time, we need hope in the world. And there is hope. There is hope. There is hope in God. There is hope in his son, Jesus Christ. And he has given us the Holy Spirit that will bring us comfort during this hard time that we are living in. And so the first point of this message is going to be for the church. And then the second one will be for the whole world. And a reminder to the body of Christ. And so the reason I'm starting with the church is because Judgment always begins in the house of God. Reformation always begins in the house of God. Revival always begins in the house of God. And then 
it spreads out to everyone else. And so church, I want to say to you today, we've sinned. We've messed up. We've not always gotten it right. There are times where we probably deserve more punishment than the world does. There might be times. Now, thank God for grace. Of course, I'm really grateful for grace. But that doesn't exclude our mess that we have made. Church, we have sinned. And we've allowed it to go on for too long. And so I believe that the time we're living in now is a call to repentance for the body of Christ. You see, what I love about the Lord is that he will chasten those that he loves. He will discipline those that he loves. He will leave the 99 to go after the one. He is always trying to open an invitation for us to come to repentance. That is God's desire for us, that we would repent so that way we could live our life and purpose the way God intends for us to live. But we need to repent. And so church, as I believe God is calling us to repent, I want to remind you of a scripture that the Lord speaks in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. And it says this. This was after the, uh, Solomon's dedication prayer uh, for the temple. And Solomon was pleading with the Lord that if there was no rain and if the heavens were shut up, please don't forget us. And then the Lord said this. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Church, it's time to repent. It's time to get back on our knees again. It's time to seek the face of God. It's time to turn from our wicked ways. Because church, we have been wicked. And hear me for a sec. For a long time, I have steered away from being one of those speakers that was uh, not necessarily the most uplifting. And this is a, a hard message for me to bring. But church, we need to repent. So I am asking, calling church of Jesus Christ throughout the world, repent, repent, repentance is what will bring revival. I remember a minister one time said, revival always began through weeping. Weeping for what? Weeping for sin. Weeping for the effects that sin has on society. Weeping for how the enemy is stealing millions of souls from the kingdom of God. Bringing them into chains for the kingdom of darkness. Weeping on behalf of those who are lost. That's how revival happens. That's how we are realigned together as a whole. That's how we are rebaptized in the love of God is that we have an urgency to see souls saved and set free for the kingdom because this is about the kingdom of God. And number two, for the whole world, and this includes the church, and that is to remember, we need 
to bring the world to Jesus. World, you need to know that God loves you. You need to know that Jesus loves you. You need to know that he loved you so much that he died on the cross for you so that you would never have to suffer the wrath of Satan. So you would never have to suffer eternal hellfire. And I'm sorry, but hell is real. It is very real. And it has expanded. Like scripture says, it has expanded itself. Because their room is getting tight. And so it has to make room. It's very real. But there is a way out. There's a way out for you. Despite that hard, scary reality. There is a way out of it. And so I want to remind you of John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And then the scripture after that says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. World, my prayer is that you would embrace the love of God through Jesus Christ, that you would see that the veils on your eyes would be taken off so that you could see clearly the truth. Church, I charge you to remember that it was the love of Jesus that saved you. And so it's the love of Jesus that he will use you to save others. Remember that you did not get where you are, church. On your own. Someone else was praying for you. Someone else was interceding for you. Someone else preached the gospel to you. So you and I must preach the gospel to others. We must bring the love of Jesus wherever we go. Bring the love of Jesus in our words, our declaration, our proclamation, and our actions. And so as God has been doing a personal revival in me, I pray that God does a personal revival within you. And I pray that you receive this message as a godly correction, a realignment, a reminder, and an encourager that there is still much work that Jesus wants to do in his church before he comes there is still work we need to do are we going to do it are we going to take care of the poor are we going to take care of the orphan are we going to take care of the widows are we going to bring healing are we going to bring deliverance we're going to help people break the shackles of sin the curses of the enemy breaking the bondage of evil from the world. And so, if you are listening to this video, I'll be the first to ask, if you have never accepted Jesus into your life, will you pray this prayer with me? Say, Dear Jesus, I repent of my sin. I know that you died on the cross for me and rose from the dead. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. And now I ask to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit of promise. And I receive this gift. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so my friends, I want to encourage you today. Because God is doing something unusual. He is doing something extraordinary. He is doing something mighty. He is doing something wonderful. But will you receive what God is doing in this season? In this hard season? Will you receive 
the fact that God is waking up the church. He is drawing people to him. I have been seeing people get saved that I never thought would get saved. I've been seeing people wake up. The Holy Spirit has been waking people up. The Father is drawing people. Remember, Scripture says, unless the Father draws me, unless the Father draws them, draws you, and the Father is drawing. The clock is ticking, guys. Jesus is coming back soon. The signs are appearing. The world is being prepared. Society is being prepared for the advent of the lawless one. The days of Noah are starting to echo because Jesus himself said, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be the coming of the Son of Man. Pay attention to what's happening in the world today. Pay attention to society. Pay attention to what scripture is saying. Scripture is being fulfilled before our very eyes. Pay attention, folks. It's getting very real. We thought that the pandemic was real. It's about to get even more real. There is more that's to come. This is not the end. And again, I, I, I gave up speaking this way a long time ago. But guys, did we, this is serious. This is about people's souls that we're talking about. I'm, you know, I'm usually not, a, I, I used to be a doom and gloom preacher and I'm not that, I'm not like that anymore. But I do have to speak the truth. Things are about to get worse in different ways. It may, it may not necessarily be that COVID will get worse. That damage has already happened, but we don't know what the aftermath of what that has caused will be. We don't know what else is going to come afterwards. We don't know how this will affect the world in the long run. That's why I say things are going to get worse. Because scripture says they will get worse. It's not about what I'm saying. It's what the word of God says. And so church, please pray. Read scripture. Love, love yourself, love your family, and love your neighbors. Continue to preach the gospel. Teach the word of God. Move in the power of the Holy Spirit. Bring healing and deliverance to people. Let there be more outpouring while there is still oil left. And so, I love you guys. I really do. I really do. And again, this is a hard message to bring. But it is what needs to be said. And so I pray that this blessed you. I pray that this woke you up. I pray that this brings you to the word and points you to Jesus. Because without him, I am nothing. This is not about me. This is all about him. This has always been about him. And so I want to end right now with a bit more hope. Because even though times will get dark, a good thing is that we don't got to go in the direction that the world is going. We don't need to suffer a lack of joy like the world does. We don't need to walk in darkness. We don't need to be in bondage to the enemy. And we won't be in bondage to the enemy because the Lord has set us free. And he who the sun sets free is free indeed. And before he comes, he will regather all of us.
He will unite us through this, through the Holy Spirit. And so I say, God bless you guys. Again, I love you all. And I pray that this blessed you.